first of all, before you can get started with any nutrition program, you have to understand what that means. I'm sorry if this is too elementary, but what is a nutrient? It's just something that provides total nutrition. It maintains life and production on the cow. Nutrients can be all sorts of different things, but without them, you don't have life, you don't have maintenance, you don't have production, you don't have anything. Um, the classifications are, of nutrients are energy. Sometimes people break those down into fats and carbohydrates. Um, protein, minerals, and vitamins, which a lot of people lump together, and then water, of course, which is probably the most overlooked nutrient of all, but is essential for life. <laughs> All right, so with nutrition, why, why is nutrition important? So what did we say a nutrient was? It's essential for life, it's essential for maintenance, so why is it important for a beef cow? Why is it important for you? Why is nutrition important at all? It helps you grow, it helps you maintain, Stay it helps alive. you live, it, it does everything, so. It plays a key role in ensuring that they stay in proper physical condition. It ensures that they give birth to and wean a strong, healthy calf for you every year. And it makes sure that they rebreed every year within a timely fashion. If you don't have the proper body condition score, which James will go over, over a little bit more in depth, then you're not, your calving intervals are gonna be far apart because she's not gonna rebreed back on that first cycle. Um, an inadequate nutrition program can result in those things that we just talked about, a low body condition score, decreased weaning weights, late calving, and a low percentage cap crop. So I'll try not to read too much off the slide, I'll try to paraphrase, but um, whenever, whenever you have calves and they're at weaning weights, why is nutrition important for them? Why is their management important around weaning time? Nutrition is important for them because this is the growing stage of their life, and if you, don't have, if you don't have that nutrition at the proper level, then they're not going to grow to their full potential, even if they have the bloodlines there to back it up. So some of the factors that can produce those heavier weaning weights are earlier birth dates, which goes back to the cow's body condition score. If she doesn't breed first off, then her calf is going to have a later birth date than some of the others. Um, a short calving period will help produce lower birth weights, and some of the genetic selection that you can select for. And like I said before, calves require a little bit different nutrition, and he said that this is the growth, growth spurt of their life. So they also require more feed and a different nutritional program. You don't expect him to go off of a maintenance diet that a cow would, and it, it help him grow to his full potential. So you need, to get, you need to have a different nutritional program for him than you would for her if she's just maintaining it. She's not doing anything extra, growing, producing a calf or anything like that. So, um, the stages of production, there are four of them, and there's a little bit different nutritional needs at each one, just like there is for weaning age at a calf. So from calving to breeding has a different uh, nutritional need than the breeding to weaning phase, mid-gestation and late gestation. And there's a, the approximate days that they take up during this whole cycle, and they all have their different needs. So in the calving to breeding phase, which I think it's easier to understand as early lactation. Um, this is the most critical period during the cow's nutritional requirements. She's going to be having the most outputs from her body, so she needs to have the most inputs into her body. This is going to be her lot, highest level of um, milk production. That milk is going to be its richest at this point. She's going to put the most into that milk at this point to feed that baby which it will need to grow to its full potential later, so you need to give her the best possible options to help that happen. Um, if cows lose weight at this period, which some of them do, um, it's going to decrease their, their conception rates later and make her breed back later. She's going to put everything she can into that calf. Right. So you've got to offset both of those. Right. Cow and cow. Right. And if you don't have a proper nutrition program, then you can't do either of them. So, um, and it's kind of a trickle down effect. So if you don't have her the body condition score that, that she needs, that calf isn't going to wean out at a weight you want to. Her condition score is going to be low, so she's not going to breed back, and that's going to increase your calving intervals. So to keep all of that from happening, you have to keep your nutrition program pretty low where she needs it to be. The second phase was breeding to weaning. <coughs> this is when milk production declines a little bit. Um, 
that calf's going to start helping take care of itself. It's going to start grazing. You can start supplementing, and he can start eating on his own. Um, she is going to start, after breeding, she's going to start producing, putting things into her body, produce the next calf, but this calf isn't going to take quite as much because he's going to start eating on his own. Um, so she should gain a little bit of weight back here because her outputs aren't quite as much. And uh, for some areas, or depending on what your, when your calving season is, this could be in the good part of the summer when grass is good, it's plentiful, it's nutritious, so she has, it's not going to be in the winter when it's dormant. And in North Carolina, where I'm from, there's nothing for them to eat at all, so hay doesn't do a whole lot for them. As far as that goes in early lactation, so in this phase, they're pretty, pretty even and, and they can gain a little bit of that weight back. Um, and nutrition rarely affects the developing fetus at this stage, but if a cow is really emaciated or she's not getting what she needs at all, then it can affect it. That's, it shouldn't, but it can if it gets severe enough. The third phase is mid-gestation with the calf weaned. In this phase, the, um, the cow is just doing herself and the next calf that she's producing. The other calf is already weaned, so he's not taking a lot. So she can start um, she can start putting things back for herself. She can start building her body condition score back up if it were low. So she doesn't need a whole lot of extra supplementation at this time. More of a maintenance diet, slightly above, um, if she's not an easy keeper. But um, the requirements for the fetus are small in terms of nutrient requirements at this phase. Um, so she can do with a little bit lower quality feed without affecting her production because she's in kind of a maintenance mode at that point. In late gestation, she, and that little piece up there, I'm sure you know that, the total live weight of the pregnant cow includes the calf and its membranes as well. But, um, during this period, the, the fetus is gaining a lot, so up to one pound a day. So if the cow's not gaining around a pound a day, then that means that she's staying at maintenance and the fetus is just growing. So you have to give her enough to keep her where she's supposed to be and grow the fetus as well. If she's not doing that, then neither one of them are growing and you're gonna have a small calf. Um, cows losing weight during this period take longer to cycle back. So if her body condition score drops or you don't get it back up, then she's not gonna breed back soon after she calves. That puts you a year behind. You don't trip it. That's coming in closer, crazy. Um, during <laughs> late gestation, if supplementation is needed during this period, um, it will. If supplementation is needed, it should be during this period to ensure the birth of a strong, healthy calf and help get her to rebreed after she does come. So, like I said before, and he said, the calving at weaning is during a growth spurt, so make sure that they have their nutritional needs covered, and um, that's the same concept with this. Age plays a role in that, so the nutrient requirements for a developing heifer are going to be different than those of a grown cow. Even though they're both going to be bred and they're both going to be growing a fetus, she's going to require more because she's going to be growing her body as well as the baby. And a grown cow is just going to be growing the baby and maintaining herself, so the, cat, the heifer is going to require more. Um, and then one thing that it says down there, it, it recommends if you do sort them out to sort yearling heifers, two-year-old bred heifers, and thin older cows into a, a group rev, not with mature normal body condition score cows because they need a little bit more supplementation and a little bit higher quality feed than just a cow maintaining wood. Does that make sense? So some of the nutrient requirements. Um, I'm not going to go into this real in depth because James is going to cover it. But if you do have any questions, let me know. Um, for you to be able to decide what your cows need and what feed and what supplement you need, you must first determine um, what their intake should be. You need to calculate what their dry inter matter intake should be and the quality of the forages that they're getting, whether that be hay, grasses, whatever, whatever it is that they're going to be eating. Um, I just wanted to show you this table, and I highlighted the ones in yellow. Those are for early lactation because that's going to be uh, the time whenever she needs the most nutrient and for the um, younger heifers. So during that early lactation phase, they need higher protein levels and higher nutrient levels than they do in any other phase. 
And that's what I wanted you to see in that table, and that's why they're highlighted in yellow. Um, for the nutrient requirements, oh, I know a lot of people at home, I don't know as much down here. I think more people, I've seen some more core samples here than I have at home, but a lot of people at home, if it's hay, it's hay, and it's all the same, and they'll eat it, and it doesn't matter. And it's just, it's just whatever. But you really should um, <coughs> analyze your hay samples, see exactly what it is you're dealing with, make sure it meets the requirements that they need. If it doesn't supplement with whatever else they need, make sure that you have all of those numbers so you can make accurate calculations and take care of them to the best of your abilities. Because the only thing that's happening is the end, in the end is you losing money. So it's, it's beneficial to both of you to take that extra time and, and money and have your hay analyzed and see where you stand. Um, and unfortunately, no single supplement will do the job for all cattle operations. So I can't stand up here and tell you that one mineral is going to work for everybody. It's going to work for every operation, every cow's body condition score, and all of your needs. So you need to, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and, and you have to think about what you're doing with them and what stage they're in before you decide what it is that they need. Also goes back to what we talked about two weeks ago, soil sampling, you know, what you got in the soil. Right. What's available with grass? It has to start from you the bottom gotta, up. You got to lay it all out mm -hmm. in the pattern to see where it's going to yeah. go. So. What is your suggestion? Uh, make a uh, blood sample for the cow, for a group of cow for no power. For the mineral? Uh huh. For the barrel? For the mineral? Uh huh. For. Uh, you can. Well, but you can test your forage for mineral content. That's where they're going to get most mm -hmm. of the mineral, is forage. And you can. There's information, I think UF has it, that will tell you how much mineral a cow should be receiving. John Arthur did it, I don't has it. I've seen it, uh, we can probably get it to you all if you want to. So then you can kind of, after you test your forage, you can see what your forage lacks, and you can adjust your mineral package for that. You know, some forages might be low in copper or high in selenium, and you might not be, need to add that to your mineral package. But knowing what's in your forage is because they're going to get probably 75% of their mineral from that forage. And, and the that's air going to come from the type of grass you grow and the type of soil you grow it on. Right. right. Yeah, the area yeah. in the state affects that because yeah. there are different minerals in the soil. <clears throat> so whenever we do talk about supplementation, um, there are all kinds of standards. There's all kinds of literature. There's all kinds of things to help you. Um, there's guides on each of those different topics, so if you do have any questions about that or need help, then there's all kinds of literature, all kinds of publications and research that's being done to help you. It's not, it doesn't have to be just a stab in the dark. You can, you can have some concrete, solid numbers to help you make educated decisions, so you don't have to go about it alone. Um, one of the nutrients that I listed on that first page, one of the first pages, was energy. That's going to be the bulk. Um, so, winter range and low quality harvested forages usually provide adequate energy for um, mature cows, but with those growing heifers um, with early gestation or early lactation, you may need a little bit more supplementation than just forage is going to provide. So make sure that you have, have what they need to help them grow to their full potential. Um, in pasture subject to drought or overgrazing, energy is most likely to be deficient. So um, a supplement containing more energy should be fed. And if the energy is deficient, you don't have to do energy and protein. You can just do energy and they have high energy. They have, they have all different types of supplementation that you can pick to fit your operation. Would you uh, put too much rain like you've had last year in the same place you would as drought? Or at least energy and grass. Yeah. It does go both ways. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have a tough year like that. And I expect we're going to have some issues with our hay this year getting the energy we need, the protein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit confusing. If it doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, feeding plant proteins with low quality forage may improve the energy nutrition of the cow more than feeding small amounts of grain. And I'll explain this on the next slide. But, um, the small amounts of grain without the inner, without the protein supplementation tend to cause decreased forage digestibility. And that is because the protein 
the protein is broken down into nitrogen, and the nitrogen helps for functioning of the rumen. So if you don't have proper protein, you don't have proper nitrogen, then you're not going to have proper uh, microbes in the rumen to help digest and break down the forages. Does that make sense? Do a lot of people, do any of you feed legume hay? Feed what? Feed a legume hay. I know some people come up feed alfalfa, but mostly the horses. I don't know many people that feed, feed legume hay. Um, this is just saying that it may be more beneficial for cows to feed it um, two or three times weekly rather than daily because it increases their foraging. Um, it increases their the amount that they raise, but if you don't feed that, then it doesn't really matter. As far as minerals go, there are all different kinds of minerals and mixes, and that really depends on what your operation is and, and where you are, and, and lots of different things. But there are um, whenever you're talking about phosphorus, it can be supplied in all of those different ways in a protein supplement in a salt mineral mix. But um, you need a minimum of 6% phosphorus, and those are two of the ways that you can get it. That calcium phosphate and dechlorinated rock phosphate. Trace minerals are seldom needed, but they can be supplied at a low cost. Um, calcium, calcium phosphorus ratios, they can be issues, like it says, in a lot of small ruminants. I haven't seen a lot of issues with calcium phosphorus ratios in beef cows, especially not here. So you shouldn't have any issues with that. If it gets much out of the way of a three to one ratio, then you can start seeing some issues. Um, but as long as you're feeding something commercial, it's usually pretty balanced, and you can check the feed labels to, to see where it stands on them. So, like we said before, nutrition is where it all starts. If you don't have the right nutrition, start out with the body condition score. You're not gonna have high weaning weights your calving intervals are going to be long. So the main takeaway point, bottom line of all of that is, is keep her happy and she will produce well for you. Both of you will make money. Everything will be good. So have cow is a productive cow. Anyone have any questions?